associated with flower-rich, unimproved grassland, just like this, and woodland edge, oil beetles have to have one of the most extraordinary life cycles of any British insect. They're also one of the Mendip Hills National Landscape's champion species. These are a small select suite of eight key species which thrive in quality habitats. These canaries in a coal mine are a good measure of environmental conditions and help by both driving conservation initiatives and raising awareness of the habitats in which they live. Of the UK's eight species of native oil beetles, three are thought to be extinct, while the five remaining species, the black, violet, rugged, short-necked and Mediterranean oil beetle have suffered drastic declines over the past hundred years. The Mendip Hills, however, are still considered a stronghold for the black oil beetle. The adults are active between February and May, while their larvae, or triungulins, are best spotted from May to June. Nathan Orr is Nature Recovery Ranger for the Mendip Hills National Landscape and is passionate about this scarcely known but charismatic insect. Well, the oil beetle is quite an impressive beetle. Um, it grows up to about three or four centimetres in length, so it's one of our biggest beetle species. So the black oil beetle is our champion species. That species can be quite iridescent in its colour, so it's really shiny blue around the edges and a wonderful rich black colour. But yeah, iridescent is a word that I would use to describe it. They are an amazing species because of their special life cycle. Basically they're a parasite of solitary bees. This whole process is really interesting because the adult oil beetle lays its eggs in usually in a piece of loose earth um, next to the flowers that it likes to use. Um, the eggs then hatch and the tiny little larvae they crawl out and climb onto a flower. Now the larvae are called triungulins and the triungulins have these tiny little hooked feet um, and when a solitary bee comes along and it has to be a solitary bee uh, when the solitary bee comes along and feeds on that flower that the triungulins are hiding on um, they grab hold of the bee and they fly back to the nest with the bee uh, the bee is of course collecting nectar and pollen um, and then it lays an egg into that nest it seals that nest off and it goes off to make another nest and when that happens the triungulin then eats the pollen and the nectar. The reason why we are fighting to conserve the black oil beetle is the fact that it needs a flower rich environment and this is one of our rarest habitats. We've lost about 97% of our flower rich meadows across the country and so this has been a dramatic decline in this particular type of habitat uh, which supports a whole range of different species not just the oil beetles but the oil beetles are a good indicator of this particular type of habitat because the solitary bees that they need only flourish in areas where they have our wide variety of wild flowers, particularly flowers like celandine and the humble dandelion. Both of those plants are plants that the oil beetle larvae love. Over the last 50 years or so, our changes of ag in agricultural practices have resulted in a, a real fragmentation of our habitat. So nowadays we flail every hedge, so we cut every hedge. That really does change the environment in, in our landscape. And all of our fields are cut really close to these hedge lines. Again, pushing out all of the diversity that would live in the base of these hedge lines as well. Um, and so it really impacts on a vast array of our species and the oil beetle has, has been drastically impacted by them. Nationally we have lost an awful lot of these species and the Mendips is really important for the oil beetles because we've still retained these flower rich meadows. They are a bit of a rarity across the country um, and so because of the fact that the Mendips is a bit of a rough old landscape, the soil is really thin and so it doesn't suit ploughing, it doesn't suit arable crops, it means that we have continued much older practices of farm usage on our land and therefore the things that the oil beetle needs are still here. This year I've asked all of my volunteers to keep an eye open for all oil beetles while they've been out and about and we've got lots of new records of new places where the oil beetles are being found because we're actually now looking but it just highlights how important the Mendips are to this particular species. Mm -hmm.
So what can conservation organisations and landowners do to create more oil beetle friendly habitats? Our traditional process of, for example, haymaking uh, rather than silaging would be a really important way to help conserve an awful lot of our species, the solitary bees and the oil beetles, because by making hay you give a chance for all of the flowers to, to fully develop and to grow and for all of the different things that use them to carry on using them. Wide field margins that are dedicated to wildlife are another way that we can really help our um, endangered species here on the Mend, it's by giving that extra bit of space to our wild species. When you are managing your hedge lines, if we can increase the surface area of those hedge lines by creating cuts in a bit close at one point and then allowing the hedge to spread out at another point and making those nice long edges where brambles and all the other things can grow as well really benefit the species. So how can you ensure the Mendips continue to be oil beetle friendly? Keep a lookout for adult beetles between February and May on grasslands and woodland edge. Send the Mendip Hills team details of your sightings with a location and a photograph. And help create wildflower areas or plant bee-friendly plants in your garden and community open space, especially if you live in a priority area for the black oil beetle. I love them because one, they're an amazing looking beetle. They're archaic looking, big long legs, long abdomen, and this beautiful iridescent color. The way they move is enchanting. When you see one crawling its way through the undergrowth, it's really a fantastic thing to find. I particularly like them because we, often do down parasites. We often are mean about parasites because we think that the thing that they do is mean, but actually they're an indicator of a really healthy biosphere.